Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about a different subject which has not to that extent covered before in any of the technologies. The general subject has been discussed and experimentation have been conducted based on that. However, it has not been pointed out the importance of it. Nikola Tesla did develop um, his technologies which are literally based on static electricity and they define the propagation of waves which are um, created via Tesla coils and as radio engineers we all know or you all know that your world is based on the electromagnetic wave that is the waves which we all know today how our radio works how our communication system works, how broadcast works literally everything is based on electromagnetic waves which is a retarded wave that means it is always slower than the speed of light and there's another wave which is by many not accepted to be existing however it has been proven more than once that it exists and it exists in the nature all over the place and I want to conduct today some experiments to show you that it exists and what kind of application we can use to benefit from it. Here we have our normal setup. Um, well, you will see I have a little additional application or tool here in between. It's called a spectrum analyzer. Um, it's an analog tool, it's not very precise, um, however, it gives me some indications goes up to one gigahertz or can measure up to microwave uh, where wavelengths and so on. I have at the moment tuned the TMT um, to its main frequency so it's 181 um, kilohertz so it's the first um, um, peak is here at 180 it should, should point out 0.1 so that is at the moment at the division at 0.2 so that means each division here replicates 200 kilo cycle and we have 10 of them so there's 2 mega cycle literally of the board what you can see have sine wave um, applied this little setup here will be my proof case there are two metal boxes cake boxes to be precise and we have a little radio here so what I'm supposed to do with this radio I show you electromagnetic waves and I think you all know what it means if we use a Faraday, Faraday cage and put a radio inside a Faraday cage we will not get any reception anymore why is that? the Faraday cage is based on a construction like a mesh or it can be a container, a metal container what it does the mesh structure has a length and the transverse magnetic field propagation has a wavelength so when the mesh is smaller than the wavelength of the transverse magnetic radiation the field is shielded so so good so far if you have a metal container the mesh becomes all of a sudden um, a width of the molecule or atom length. That means in order to penetrate a um, metal container I would go would have to use a frequency on a subatomic level if we propagate via transverse magnetic um, radiation. So far so good. I think the, the setup of the Tesla coil we have seen that before. Let's now start with showing you what it means to put the system a radio here from a radio transmitter um, receiving a broadcast from a radio station what it means to put it in a in a shield environment or so called Faraday cage Just we're in Edinburgh, so here the radio is now tuned to a radio station and tell us up as loud as you can. I put it inside the container you can hear already the reception gets lower and lower I mean I close the lid now 
sound is gone you hear only static Now, reception is available again. Of course, we do this one. And we're going to do that shielded. So, that is so called a nested Faraday cage. A nested Faraday cage is literally a Faraday cage inside a Faraday cage to make it a little bit more tough. Put that here and put this one on top. There is no reception anymore, so this radio is dead. There is no way you can receive any radio signal. Now, is there a system available which allows you, under that condition, to receive a radio signal? The answer is, yes, of course there is. A far superior system which can transmit through the ground, which can go to concrete which can be inside a Faraday cage, it does not matter. It penetrates at all. And why is that? So I'm talking about so-called scalar waves. I'm talking about longitudinal waves. And what has not been defined so far is there have been a lot of videos around that subject. Eric Dollard, you find on my website a couple of videos from Eric Dollard where he explains that with a rope, with a piece of rope, when you pull that, there's also an explanation if you look at the tsunami wave a tsunami wave is literally a longitudinal wave so if you look at, uh, at our solenoid coil we have the electromagnetic propagation which is a wave which on the water it was explained is going up and then you have some magnetic wave which goes 90 degree lacking um, in the same direction so you have literally 90 degree opposite phase you have electric and magnetic or current running. Now there's a third component and the third component is the scalar wave which literally runs inside the solenoid coil from the beginning to the end forward and backward. It is a so-called pressure wave. So It runs from here to here. It literally pushes out on both sides. And that is actually outside our that helps outside our space because the propagation is not transverse. It is longitudinal. There's literally a point reference which is so sharp and so detailed that anything else cannot compare to it, like laser beams or whatever you want to call it. Nothing can be as precise as that, and because it's not transverse transmitted, there is no retard, uh, retard um, part of propagation. I'm talking about the speed. I can prove that as well. We will make do some um, application to show that. So the propagation of transverse um, magnetic fields, as we all know, is below the speed of light. But because of the longitudinal wave and a different wave, because it doesn't need any time to reach from the beginning to the end. It is faster than the constant the speed of light. We, and I have to refer here to Professor Wheatstone. That is pi over 2 times c. That's 290,000 miles per second. So, coming to the main subject, why am I doing that here? Um, the most important part here is, if we want to have a communication system and I have been reminded by forum members from Eric Dollar's forum that the first thing we should do is not to focus really on wireless transmission on energy we should focus on communication because if we change communication the logical consequence would be energy to do that kind of systems or to apply this kind of system to communication is very simple I will not go to the subject around that that will be part of my professional part of research and development to deal with it. But what I can show you is how we can define that it's working. So let's go back to our example here with our Faraday cage. So before we move on to our demonstration how we can propagate 
um, electric waves while scalar waveform and be independent. Let me show you another example which I can demonstrate to you here quite nicely now. So at the moment we have a sine wave actually running through. So that is um, without any filters, that is what you have, have at the moment. Of course when I touch it a bit I will get a little bit more. And you see also here's a form here on the scope. Now let me change that to a square wave. Look at that. Now we get an extremely strong signal and beautiful harmonics. All the octaves. Look at that. That's tremendous. Now if I change it back to sine wave. Gone. So that should now give you an indication why we have to use pulsed waves. There's much more energy, much more energy in the system. Okay, let's go back. Now let's go to the frequency modulation. I have added now frequency modulation. As you can see here, looks very very nice on a on the. Um, spectrum analyzer so the frequency of course the modulation changed as you can see here um, it's much higher and also the octave so I have set the radio at the moment 281 you can say 282 normal radios here let me put this up in the plastic bag Let's go to 187. Let's see. Okay, let's put it in here. Let's put this one in here. Close the Faraday cage. Make still a hell of a noise. Let's put it in here. Makes still a hell of a noise. And I can tell you, I can go out in the garden now, I can walk away from the house, and I still receive that signal. And that is not grounded. I mean, I take it here in my hand and walk away, and would still have that signal received very strongly. So that is one indication. Let's have a look what else we can do. I'm now in my garden here. At the end of my garden, about 20 meters away. I can still hear the signal. I can hear the signal. It's a bit noisy out here, but the signal is almost as strong as it was inside the gauge. And please bear in mind, this is only done by a signal generator. There is no amplification here on this Tesla coil, just a simple signal generator. That should give you some indication how powerful that is. So what we can do here, we can apply, you literally can use any radio technology today on the market and you can adapt it on a transmitting and on the receiving side using Tesla, Tesla technologies and you tra literally transmit everything what you normally would do transverse you just exchange and transmit it scalar thank you